Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead, <laughs> here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here tonight to talk Seeking Sister Wife, another fantastic episode. Yeah. And I'm dying to get into it. But before we do, we've got to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say dumb things. Uh We say a lot of bad words. And so if you're so sorry, you might want to find yourself another dumps to baby. (laughs) But if you're down and you're ready to party with these two raccoons, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah. And if you are down and ready to party, be sure to follow us on the Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. If you think we're crazy over Mm. here, we're way more crazy over on there. Big yikes. No cap. (laughs) Thank you also to all of you watching on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow in the algorithm, which means we grow the dumpster. So thank you in advance. Thank you so much. All right, before we get into this crazy episode, do you have any major takeaways, any thoughts you want to share, Beatrice? Yeah, my hot take this week is that I fucking hate Ashley. You what? I fucking hate Ashley. Did you say you what? <laughs> you hate Ashley. Hate so you've her. been kind of on a slow spiral as yeah. it concerns Ashley, liking her less and yeah. less. But now we're just in a fucking tailspin. Yeah, I really don't like her. You don't like her at all. Why? Mm-mm. I thought her comments this episode, we'll get to it, but I thought her, some of her comments to Shane mm. were really unnecessary. Her kissing Sarah in front of him, making him feel all uncomfortable. Yeah, that was I'm so like, strange. I don't While like While she's it. holding a baby. I, I, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot that was kind of cringy about that. Uh-huh. So we will talk about that. But I can see how you would feel that way. Yeah. Um, my takeaway was I did learn what polygyny means or polygyny means. Oh, yeah. Basically, it's polygamy, but for dudes. And I'm like, isn't that huh? what polygamy is generally? It's always for dudes. What's all these words, man? Is there really a polygamy for women? I thought it was polyandry. I thought that's what Seeking Brother Husbands was all about. Like, we practice Yeah, but they were all polyamorous. Yeah. So they weren't really polyandrous. But they said it was polygamy. I don't even know how to say that word. Like, I just, I I think polygamy in general is always for the dudes. It's never for the women. Yeah. So you can miss me with polygamy, Mike. (laughs) We'll get to when we get to the shibooty. The (laughs) shibooty. But I really enjoyed this episode. So let's hop into it. We are on Seeking Sister Wife. Season 5, Episode 9, entitled Seeking the Silver Lining. Yeah. Seeking the Silver Lining. It ain't there, baby. No, it ain't. There is no silver lining. Heads (laughs) up. Not at all. All right, get us started. All right, well, we start with everybody's favorite, the Merrifields, with Danielle's dumbass flying to Rio, even though she said she wasn't going to. We knew she was going to. She is desperado for her man. (sighs) Why? She wants her me. I don't know. (laughs) I cannot see it at all for her. I don't at all. I see nothing in him, Mm -hmm. nothing redeemable, nothing nothing attractive, nothing remotely conscious. (laughs) I see nothing in that man, but she wants to get to him as fast as possible. Him and his wife beaters, I guess. She just missed seeing those so sexy. bulging muscles. Oh, yeah. My so God, so bulging. hot. I did see something that was bulging. It wasn't his muscles. His chode. It was in his pants. <laughs> his balls. I'm like, oh, God, those shorts. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we will get there. But did you notice how nobody picked her up at the airport? No one. She, was she arrived with her camera person, and yeah. she had to find her own way in Rio de Janeiro, uh-huh. Brazil. Yeah. And then she gets to the apartment. Yeah. And Garrick doesn't even meet her at the door. He's like upstairs on his phone working. Yeah, okay. For what? He's looking for Poon, honey. Yeah, he's on He's Tinder. looking for his next woman. Yeah, 100%. That's his job. Totally. Natalia opens the door and greets her with like a weird hug. And she's Hi. like, oh my God, I miss so you. So nice to see you. Hi. And then Danielle's acting all awkward and weird. She goes upstairs to like bring her bags and shit. And I guess... She's going to be staying in the room with Garrick and mm-hmm. Natalia's kicked out to the guest room. Maybe she's sick of Garrick. Maybe. maybe. She's like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you. You Please can fuck him. spend your nights with Garrick so I can have a break in my room Ugh. crying to myself. How do I get out of this situation with this translucent yeah. pink person? I know. So 
translucent <laughs> pink person. Psychopath. He's a, he's a psychopath. And he's so weird. So like in his talking head, he's like, yeah, it's, it's really good to see Danielle. I'm really emotional about it because I love her so much. And I've been married to her for 16 years. And I just love her. And I missed her so much. And I'm like, can you smile? <laughs> there can is you no smile? emotion at all. What the fuck? In anything that you're saying, it's like you're dead inside. He is it's dead It's like inside. there are 17 layers of unconsciousness. <laughs> covering his one spark of consciousness which is just his lust that's his all that is existing inside of him is his deviant predatory <laughs> lust i hate that man so much I, I hate him so much he is so hateable i don't mean to say that every week i feel like y'all get it but i can't take it i can't take it either every time him. i see him i hate him more i know jesus please keep me from hating people <laughs> It's the wrong thing. You should be more godly. You should be more Christian. Girl, you I should love no everybody. Jesus you know, Jesus loved did thy flip over some tables in a temple. Jesus did tell Peter, get me, get thee behind me, sucker. Preach. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Jesus got mad. I'm just saying, Garrick is such a heretical, awful person, plus bad father, husband, and uh -huh. lover. Yeah. Oh, I just, totally. I just, I... I'm not going to be violent. I'm going <laughs> to stop right there. Well, after Danielle gets all settled in the weird Airbnb. I hate him so much. Garrick in his talking head is like, yeah, I talked to Natalia about how she doesn't communicate to Danielle. And I think Natalia has got some insecurity Which that she has to deal with. Interesting. What do we think her insecurities could be? Because he didn't flesh them out for us. I don't know. I'm like, I don't think Natalia is insecure at all. She's honestly. 26. She's hot. Yeah. She's a lawyer. Right. Her dad's got money. Mm -hmm. What is she insecure about except if it's Danielle? I don't know. I I just wonder if like this whole like, oh, Natalia is a bad person. She doesn't want us to be together. She doesn't like me. You know, all this forced narrative. I feel like it's all fake. I don't think Natalia gives a shit, honestly. I think hmm. Garrick tells Natalia when Danielle's <laughs> not around, like, oh, I love you. You're the only one I want to be with. I've never, like, come like this before. Ew, like, stop. I feel like he tells her the most nasty things, I, even though it's, like, so unbelievable. I don't know. I was picking up on some mild to moderate dislike on Natalia's part when she was sitting there with Garrick oh, really? and with Danielle. Yeah, because Danielle is so icky. Yeah. She's just so gross. <laughs> She and saccharine icky. sweet and yeah. her weird smile and it'll all happen on god's time I god's know. got her back i'm like oh god i hate you too shut up but i mean natalia is not a dumb woman right so she's hearing this and she's seeing this and i don't think she likes danielle that is probably why she hasn't responded to danielle yeah when danielle's texting texting her her bullshit which yeah. we know it's bullshit totally she doesn't want to respond to it but she does respond to garrick yeah. So maybe Natalia is one of these wives like Nyla talks about in oh, the yeah. next scene that just want to get into and assimilate into the family and then kick out the existing wife. I guess I could see that too. And I mean, maybe she doesn't like Danielle because she's fucking weird and tries to kiss her and tries to Who molester would? her and everything every time she's there. Like, but it's weird though when Natalia greets her, she's like patting her on the back, uh, patting her on the head. And I'm like, what are, what are we doing here? I don't here? know. I don't know. There's a lot of people online and or a comment section on YouTube and Reddit and everybody that thinks that Danielle just wants to fuck these yeah. women too. Well, we've talked about that. Yeah. As definitely a possibility. I, I don't think it. Natalia seems down with that. No. But it's would? all very weird. Yeah. And then Danielle asks them about like the wedding, like yeah. how's that going? And seems like it's going to be a bit uncertain. Yeah. Natalia and Garrick are like, oh, we very stress. It's it's very stressful. We don't know what we're going to do. We, there's a possibility we might not be able to get married. And everybody's like, oh, no. What a shock. Wow. And then we find out later in the episode that they don't. We'll get to it. Mm -hmm. But after... Danielle asks about the marriage stuff. Then they kind of broach the pregnancy. Yeah, I thought that was so which fascinating. Is so weird. Because Danielle is trying to make it seem like it's a surprise. I think Natalia asks her, like, well, how are you doing, though, Danny? How do you feel? And she's like, I'm okay. I mean, it's a surprise. I mean, I'm pregnant. And this is where we have Natalia kind of 
side eyeing her and going yeah. like, surprise? Are you sure it's a surprise? Like you knew you were fertile, right? And yeah. you were fucking raw, right? <laughs> so you know what happens when two people start fucking raw. Like there's <laughs> babies that could happen. And Daniel's like, absolutely not. I mean, it's been 14 years with no baby. And now I have one. It's a surprise. And I'm thinking, yeah, bitch, it's been 14 years with no baby. And now all of a sudden, when Garrick is the closest he's ever been to marrying another woman, now you're pregnant. Mm. I think Natalia's got her number. Mm. And I know I have her number. Oh, I yeah. feel strongly about this. So you think that's what the conflict was? Like Natalia was clocking Danielle for the lion, skeeving Yeah, I bitch. think Danielle is desperate. I think Toast. Danielle is playing game and mm -hmm. I think Danielle got pregnant on purpose because if you've managed to not be pregnant for 14 years and all of a sudden you are like on the eve of him going to Brazil, like something's a little fishy with that. Oh, 100%. So Natalia, again, she's not a dumb woman. Yeah. And she's probably thinking that too, right? Oh, totally. I, we're all thinking it. But Danielle, like in her talking head, kind of reveals it. She's like, I think Natalia thinks that I got pregnant on purpose to try and save my relationship. I'm like, yeah. You did. We all think that. <laughs> and that is exactly what you did. Hello. <laughs> like you're trying to frame it like it's Natalia's evil thoughts or whatever that she hates you guys so much. I'm like, I don't think so. I think she wants to get to America. I don't know why she's doing it this way with Garrick. I feel like I you could either. do it with anybody else. Colty from mm -hmm. 90 Day Fiance would be better than Garrick. Oh, God. And that's, I mean, that's saying something. It is saying something. <laughs> but I feel oh, like Colty and his mom too. would be way better. But I just feel like we go back to what we talked about, I don't know, two or three episodes ago, where we're wondering what the motivation is with Danielle. Like, you've been by Garrick's side this entire time. You both have been looking on the apps, trying to find people. You've both been involved in going down to other countries to meet these people. Like, you are in it. You're 10 toes down in it. But now, right when he's at the precipice of doing it, sealing the deal, now all of a sudden you're panicking. Now all of a sudden you're manufacturing drama, creating problems with right. Natalia. Now all of a sudden you're pregnant. Like, why? I thought you wanted this, mm -hmm. but you don't want it. But for some reason, you can't just say, I don't want it. Why can't you say that? I know. It's really weird. Like, just not being honest with each other. And then, like, Garrick, you know, and is talking. is like, well, children are a blessing from God. So it's a really great thing. I'm really happy. Can you tell on my Jesus face? Jesus bot. Yeah, Jesus bot. <laughs> yeah. Super fucking He's weird. He's fucking zombie. Yeah. Psychopath. Mm -hmm. Dead inside. Then after the whole marriage talk and everything, then they get the phone call. Yeah. From the judge or the slash bailiff, bailiff or, or whatever. Somebody in the courthouse, honey. Drama. Is calling them because apparently, and this I loved. Yeah. Because there was not enough information <laughs> yeah. given, but I'm like sussing it out. So apparently the bailiff who is involved in the court that's hearing whether they can issue a license for their marriage. Yeah. Apparently the bailiff did a little searchy poo on Garrick. And this is exactly what we have all been saying week after week. Like, you dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> don't you think you putting this shit out there so that you can groom and also traffic women into the country? <laughs> yeah. Like, don't you think that that is searchable and findable by governmental bodies who might seek to obstruct you, you dumbass. Dummy. So this bailiff somewhere in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, finds out about Garrick and their polygamous plot mm -hmm. and says, basically, no, you don't get the license. You don't get to marry her. Oh, no. Shocker. We're all so well, Garrick surprised. Garrick cries. Well, yeah, he fakes. He does a Robin Brown cry where his yeah. eyes get misty, but nothing falls out right. of there. <laughs> and he's like, oh, God. I, I don't know what we're going to do. Gee, oh man, oh gee. Like, right. <laughs> you're just like so upset that he can't bang her like every day for six weeks again. Right. Or that he can't just bring her right back to America right. because he wanted to fast track the whole process and then continue banging her in America. And so now all of the well laid plans of mice and pink people <laughs> have fallen apart and Natalia's pissed off because for whatever reason she wants to get to America mm -hmm. and I've just I've just been fucking this guy for six weeks I have put in the work and now <laughs> yeah. you're telling me I can't get to the U.S. of A fuck and so she goes upstairs and she's like I need a break stress stress <laughs> and so then Danielle who's just got gaga cuckoo dreamy eyes for Garrick goes on a walk with him Oh, God. And his outfit. With his shorts. Can we just... Let's, let's put the picture. We're going to have to post the picture of him in his shorts. <laughs> and then you said somebody made a comment on Reddit about it. What did they yeah, say? Yeah, let me find it okay. real quick. 
Okay, so somebody by the username Gig for Glasses posted this on the subreddit today, and their ta- their comment was, "We need to talk about the cut of those shorts." Oh my god! The extreme low rise, the taper through the thigh, the cuff at the knee. What is going on here? And then the top comment, which made me laugh out loud, was, "He dresses like a fun, outdoorsy kind of butch Gen X lesbian aunt." No offense to the lesbian <laughs> aunts out there, though. Oh my god, he does. As long as he's wearing those. Teva sandals too. <laughs> yeah. Like he would be spot yeah. fucking on. And then he's got those weird sunglasses on too. And what his hair doing? is always like gelled back and styled to perfection. He thinks he is doing something, Beatrice. He thinks he is hot shit wearing that black wife beater. I can't, I can't take it. And it's, it's like too much for one. my blood pressure, honey. I can't take it. I'm gonna stroke out. I know. And I was watching like some of the older seasons. He's still wearing the same freaking wife beaters. I'm like, is that all your wardrobe is? Yes. Because you think you're hot in that? Yes. I told you there was some <sighs> article about him in some like USA Today or some Daily Mirror or whatever. And in the article that he consents to like give commentary to, he's wearing his wife beater or no shirt <laughs> at all and then you I go up can't. on his instagram he ain't ever got a shirt on either no. he's so proud of his physique i don't get it dude he thinks he's so hot and you know what sidebar there's been a lot of comments like on reddit of people saying that maybe we're gonna get like a 90 day seeking sister wife crossover because he's gonna mm. maybe bring over natalia oh my god on the k1 wouldn't that be insane if he was on 90 day fiance with natalia that would be wild i think that would be great um we I'd do know that he it. has his entertainment llc for all of his projects yeah <laughs> so i'm sure he would love it because i think they're clout goblins and oh, totally. fame chasers 100 percent. so he's got his bulge out his bananas <laughs> out honey and his little khaki shorts they go and sit down and yeah they have a conversation and again danielle's just looking at him with these dreamy eyes indoctrinated cult eyes dude and she is a weird like her weird smile she's like oh god works in mysterious ways it's a blessing in disguise she's so happy oh my god she's ecstatic. she's thrilled that it's not working it out and that natalia is back in the condo crying her eyes out totally. she loves it and she even says it in her talking head she's like yeah i am a little relieved I'm like yeah yeah thing <laughs> yeah because you didn't want them to get married just be fucking honest but no it's always it's god's plan and maybe it's supposed to work out this way and we'll figure it out and garrick is just like sitting there plotting and scheming he's like nah yeah i'm gonna ghost her probably i mean i got the vibe and tell me if you did as well but it really felt like to me that he's already checked out with natalia like as soon as he got the news that he couldn't bring her in on a marriage visa he instead had to use one of his two k1 visas he's already thinking oh man that's like eight nine months i'm not gonna wait around for this bitch mm-hmm. i'm already on to the next like his his spirit was already <laughs> moving on they're going to ghost her oh yeah and we saw in a preview from i don't know several weeks ago right. where natalia is talking about um, them not texting her back. This is after they go back to America. I don't hear from them. I don't see them. They're not texting me back. I don't know what's going on. So he's already detaching and they're going to ghost this young girl. I mean, that's what it kind of feels mm-hmm. like. And then we also had that preview not too long ago of him dating that chick from uh, Michigan or yes. something. Yes. And so he's already probably going to bang that chick because oh they're going to get intimate or something. It's like, oh, you're so beautiful. You remember that cringy yes. ass? Yes. Oh. I hate him yeah. so much. Everything I think, about him is bad. Oh, everything. And mm-hmm. I think all of this was just a ruse for him to get pussy. Oh, duh. I mean, like, well, even Hello? just this whole, like, oh, we're going to get the marriage visa and it's going to work out. Like, no. Well, because to him, they could get the marriage visa. He could bring her in in a month or two months. They could be banging. He could divorce her promptly. And then he's on to the next. And so it fits in his timeline and his <sighs> his vision from God that he got in his garage from a breeze. Yeah. That he's going to have five women. And he's on a timeline. I hate this man so yeah. much and i hate danielle because she's complicit in all of this and i don't like, like natalia either i don't yeah, yeah. something about her is kind of weird and i was also thinking i'm like 
your kids are in America still, like being watched by mm-hmm. your family while their dad is banging some bimbo mm-hmm. in Brazil. And then now, now the mom's there. Yeah. And they're old enough to know what's going on. And yeah. they're also old enough to have friends at school who tell them what's going on. And right. they're also old enough to go on their own smartphones and watch clips of this dumbass show. You guys are an embarrassment. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. 100%. And you just brought another kid into the whole mess. Yeah. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Cool. Good choices. Parents of the year right yeah. there. Yeah. And then we have the Sherwoods. Yes, moving on. Yes, moving oh, on. There's a comment from somebody on <gasps> oh, YouTube. Yeah. And I wanted to run it by you because I know you have strong feelings this week about Ashley. All right. Let me read this. So down. let me see. Somebody named Peanut and Tiny Cat. Oh my God, that's a cute <laughs> on YouTube. User yeah, name. the profile picture is of a white oh kitty. My God. Oh my God. Anyway, she says Shane is infantilizing his wife by assuming she needs someone else at all times and can't be fine by herself like the other millions of single moms out there. The cancer thing is something he is using to try and justify in his own mind that it's okay for his wife to bring another woman into their marriage. That is not the primary reason or any reason because they admitted that they'd been trying to find another woman for her before his diagnosis. Mm. And as a sidebar... If sex with Shane is like going on a first date with Shane, no wonder she wants a woman to join the party. Can you say foreplay? (laughs) Because he's always trying to get so direct and go right to the meat of the matter. Oh, big yikes. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Do you think that Shane is infantilizing Ashley? I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting take, but it's like under the guise of like, you know, Shane would be the one that suggested Ashley find a a female partner which would you know track with my theory that maybe he's a cuck so that could make sense and maybe that's why he's doing this i don't think i just don't see that i I think he's super uncomfortable with this whole entire process i think it was fast-tracked by ashley Mm. and maybe she manipulated him into thinking that because he has cancer that he's maybe gonna die too soon and so she needs to have somebody there to lick her box while he's gone. oh my god but beatrice you you realize that's entirely speculative because what they are both saying is contrary to that what you're saying is that vibes Vibe check. check. Like your vibe of Ashley is that like she's being manipulative. And I would agree yeah. that Shane seems particularly emotionally vulnerable, concerned, and worried. And yeah. so he would make an easy mark yeah. or easy prey for somebody like Ashley if she had those ulterior motives. And you know what? There is just something really strange about her. The way she giggles and laughs on the couch and talks, for example, about Shane being everything she could ever want in a man. But like she needs a woman because the woman emotionally satisfies her. She can talk to a woman. And he's sitting right next to her on the couch. Uh-huh. He looks uncomfortable. He looks insulted and offended a little bit. And I'm like, Ashley, even if that's true, do you need to be saying that in front of your husband? No. Who might be terminal. And he's very worried about you and himself. Like, who are you? And I'm like, why are you implying that men can't have deep emotional communication with their women like that's really fucked up to say and like i'm not dogging on the fact that you're bisexual and you want to explore the side of yourself in a heteronormative relationship Mm -hmm. there's lots of people that are like that and that's fine you do you boo boo but it just feels a little selfish a little she's doing this while he has cancer like it'd be one thing if he didn't if he wasn't sick you know what I mean? Like, and he was uncomfortable with it and it was fine. But the fact that you mm-hmm. fast tracked this because of his cancer right. diagnosis and you're framing it like, oh no, he's totally okay with it. And like, I need somebody to take care of me. And then they're not, they're not also introducing this to any of their partners either. They're not saying mm. this out loud. Like, yeah, Shane has cancer. So you're going to be entering into you're a situation right. with you're like right. this. Like, like, why wouldn't they be saying that? To Sarah, and furthermore, like, if what you're looking for is somebody to, like, enter into the family, be with Ashley, be another mother to your children, Mm -hmm. like, why are we choosing Sarah? (laughs) It feels to me like Ashley just wants Sarah because she thinks Sarah's beautiful because it's really all she mentions other than this episode she's like she's educated she's ambitious whatever but like she's 28 years old Mm -hmm. she's been in a lot of casual relationships and you're going to pin all of this responsibility and emotional weight on this young girl y'all are weird they're really weird and i don't even know if sarah knows the full scope of all of that like she just Mm -hmm. i think she's just agreeing to this weird situation because she's been in other like 
open marriages and open relationships and stuff and so she's like yeah i'll try whatever but like it feels like when sarah comes over to their house and ashley and shane like immediately get into it and they're like so will you be exclusive will you make sure not to date anybody will you make sure not to fuck anybody else and will you be 100 percent committed to us right now we that need an answer insane like literally crazy and sarah's just like um sure i guess i'll promise not to date anybody else and then in our talking head she's like i said yes but i'm not 100 percent sure like this that. is really intense <laughs> like i would love if we could just do what everybody else on the planet does and like spend some time together see if we actually can communicate and have rapport like can you give me a few dates before you're asking for me to commit to your entire family structure that's weird af it's hella fucking weird and they're shocked so it seemed like they expected her to be coming over sit down at the big dining table meeting table to have Mm -hmm. their business interview they expected sarah to be like yeah this is too much for me guys peace out yeah bye but sarah doesn't do that Mm -hmm. and sarah says okay i I, like you said i agree i'm not going to pursue other people but i honestly feel that she's doing it for the cameras like she just doesn't want to let them down in front of the nation oh yeah but i just sniff a ghosting in their future because they're strange they're very and they're going about it in a really weird way and ashley there's something very diabolical about you and the fact that you are a psychiatrist that you are a medical doctor that you have patients Uh when your husband is sitting there next to you and in your life clearly in pain and in need of attention whether he says he wants it or not this man needs your focus and attention hello and the fact that you're willing to go chasing tail right now while you got a baby in your stomach and everything that's what i'm saying you're heavy with child <laughs> heavy with child you are heavy with child and all you care about is eating a box like lady it's so it doesn't look weird. good for your practice no not at all and like it's evident when sarah leaves and ashley like goes to kiss her like sarah goes to kiss her on the cheek and then goes to kiss her on the other cheek and then ashley's like no kiss me right up this is so nuts while she's holding her baby and while shane's right there watching everything so closely and shane looked so uncomfortable by that and Sarah looked really uncomfortable by that. Sarah and looked like she was essayed. I mean, <laughs> she was so getting essayed weird. right now. And Ashley's like, we're not French. Kiss me on my mouth. And, and then Sarah says, well, I mean, your baby's right here. So I didn't know like what's appropriate. But OK, go off, queen. Okay. And then she gets the fuck out of there as fast as she can. And they're so happy. They think it went really well. Well, Ashley's happy. And all I saw was a woman who couldn't wait to get the fuck out of that house 100 percent. you guys have deep problems that you need to address yeah ashley for sure and then they go ashley and shane go out to dinner with their friend rachel who's very pretty i like her i like her a lot too why and- haven't they well maybe she don't want none of that but she seems like a reasonable person with a moral compass she doesn't want any of that insanity i'm sure no and we saw like a glimpse of her last episode with shane and i really liked them together but then they're at dinner and ashley's just going on and on about sarah and how beautiful she is but no she's like really great and emotionally intelligent but she's so beautiful and i want to eat her pussy really bad like that's literally what she's saying and rachel's like oh my god yes queen that's great but shane how do you feel about it Mm -hmm. and shane's just like awkwardly eating his salmon he's like yeah it's it's good yeah i mean they kissed and i saw it and my shirt's wrinkled (laughs) and his shirt was wrinkled when sarah visited and his shirt is wrinkled on the couch and i'm like sir and Ashley, like, you could help your husband out a little bit and say, could you iron your own shirt and or you could iron his shirt. Somebody iron Shane's shirt. He's looking crazy out in these raccoon streets. He needs somebody to take care of him. I feel bad for him. Oh, I'm like, I feel uh, bad for this guy so bad because he's dealing with cancer and then having to be OK and like suck it up for his wife who wants to bang other bitches. Yep. While they're married. And they seem to want to get Rachel's approval. <sighs> and Rachel, to her credit, is like, yeah, I mean, that sounds like a great situation, but I'm like a little bit cautious because uh-huh. it's been one week. You've seen <laughs> yeah. her three times total, you know, and, and it's been one week or whatever. And you guys are moving really quickly. And um, Ashley then says something like, well, she's got to be okay with all of this, all of my stuff and all of Shane's stuff. And if she's not going to be okay with that, we need to know that sooner rather than later. Mm. I'm like, I don't think that's how 
relationships work and no. start off. Like if you're going to trauma dump on me, if you're going to make this my responsibility to keep your family together because somebody might be terminal, like that's just not going to work. You're never going to hear from Sarah again. No, not at all. And like, I hope that they're saying that and maybe the TLC editors are just editing that shit out, you know, for the storyline. But I don't know. It just seems really fucking fishy to me. And I was also thinking during this episode that I wonder if the reason why Shane comes off so hard and like he's always wanting to shoot down all of these girls and be a little controlling about who Ashley picks, maybe that's because that's the only semblance of control he has in, mm. in this whole dynamic because this mm. is all driven by Ashley because she's a selfish ass hoe and wants to date other women in front of her husband even though he's dealing with cancer. And so this is his only way of like, regaining a little bit of that and being like well no i don't like this bitch because she's not good for our family but he just kind of has to cow down to mm -hmm. ashley and then he had that comment a couple like it was it last episode where he's like talked about how he doesn't want to be weak like what if she mm -hmm. calls him weak mm -hmm. what if she calls him weak every time he emotes and says yeah I, i'm not really comfortable with this it makes me feel like really insecure and i just don't like seeing Maybe, you with other people but i mean again it's so speculative and when they uh. were on the subreddit and they were doing their ama they were definitely a united front they said this is something that they want they still want it okay. they're still looking because heads up sarah ain't going to work honey mm -mm. they've been looking before his diagnosis they are still looking um and so i presume that this is what they want it's just very strange for mm. the onlooker. And that's all I'm saying. I think it's what Ashley wants and she's convincing him. And I worry about Shane. I worry about him too. Because again, health. in the AMA just done, I think last week, yeah. he said something like, yeah, and I have another surgery, unfortunately, coming up now in the next week. So I presume this has something to do with the cancer. And it's all probably really scary for him yeah. and really heavy for him. And this is what he's dealing with. And I just feel bad about it. And then there was another comment on Reddit somewhere where somebody suggested an alternative theory that maybe the reason why they're going with this is to distract themselves from the cancer diagnosis. And I'm like, that's crazy. But mm -hmm. I could also see a world where people would do this because they don't really like to talk about his cancer. Like they kind of like briefly mention it. Ashley cried last episode and he got kind of emotional. But then they kind of like disengage from it right but y'all are in your 30s and one yeah. of you is a psychiatrist you guys shouldn't be emotionally bypassing True. you guys shouldn't be opting to distract yourself and sort of deal with the very important issues at hand like that's not what mature people ought to be doing that's true but this is tlc so yeah. we don't have a whole bunch of mature people we have a bunch of deviants <laughs> we do a bunch of degenerate that's right degenerate people <laughs> except for shane i like shane i like just shane. say i like shane justice for shane next we have the salahuddin's the shabooties the shabooties <laughs> yes and they're going to meet another polyandrous no, not polyandrous polygynist yeah that's a hard word to say which yeah. means my polygamy is about me and my dick, and my dick i'm and a man balls. honey and i get to have all these bitches yes. polygamy yeah yeah they're harems mike and shamir yeah. yeah mike and shamir and so they're a polygamous couple polygynist couple whatever and mike has had three wives i think one yeah. of them divorced that was an interesting conversation because yeah. it sounded like there were a lot of dynamics and politics in his marriages yeah some sister wife dynamics yeah there. like he had an original first wife uh-huh then he had the bright idea or his dick did yeah to get a second wife which his first wife did not appreciate but he did it anyway which i'm sure is so godly and it's also in the sacred text that you can go ahead and throw over your first wife for of your course. second wife get your, your noodle wet yeah your pencil your wet pencil wet so the first wife dumps him and says peace out so then mm -hmm. we have wife number two becoming wife number one and then we have shamir coming into the relationship as wife number two but somehow by the time we're seeing these two people shamir is the first wife i don't know what happened to the first second wife but What's it all happening? seems fucked up and like you guys are talking about this like it's such a holy thing to do in your religion but it seems like it's really dramatic and toxic 100 percent. and like all these men do they're always like yeah it's not about sex it's of about a not. lifelong spiritual commitment in my dick yeah like it's always for my that. dick <laughs> it's so ridiculous. i need to secure that from my dick yeah for decades to come it's a spiritual union between my dick and another punani <laughs> a lot of them actually a lot yeah, of them because god said in the garage through a breeze <laughs> that i get to have all these wives yeah and i believe him of course 
because God's sperm is in all of our brains. Right. That's how we know. <laughs> God Holy talks to us in the brain through this Holy Ghost sperm. Yeah. Oh, it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, me too. So they come over um, and they're packing their picnic, which yeah. I told you they're vegan or something. So yeah. many veggies and, and fruits, fruits and, and they stuff. eat so healthy. And I do... I do think that's great. I'm proud of them totally. for that. Totally. I could never. I could never either. <laughs> then they go to the park and they sit down and they have their scripted conversation for the cameras about polygamy. And the first thing that Nyla brings up is poor Alexis. God. Who we met, her. I think, two episodes ago. She's the 26-year-old sweet girl who went out on a date with the unfortunate luck to go out on a date with these ding-dongs these old farts just acting all superior at their <laughs> broke down wine bar so fucking snooty and she showed up and she was having a nice time and yeah so nyla's dragging her to shamir and saying yeah she was 26 and shamir's like oh god ew you're 27 i know I and mean, i was How offended rude. on your behalf i, I know. find you to be a very emotionally intelligent well thank you and intellectually advanced person who has the capacity to understand my highbrow intellect as well yeah thanks. i'm like just because you're 26 doesn't mean you're not a candidate for a great relationship you fucking people I know. anyway and so nyla's like yeah she was really young we didn't like her and so we never talked to her again <laughs> so let me set that up for you. Yeah. So Alexis leaves that date two episodes ago and she's like, I love them so much. I think they're great. I can't I wait to why. continue to know that I don't either. <laughs> Maybe because they paid the check, honey. I uh, don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But she's super optimistic. And then they just ghosted her. Yeah. She's probably over there texting them. Hey, guys, that was so fun at the wine bar. Do you guys want to do something next weekend? Ghosted. Left on red. Like yeah. the mature 40-something-year-olds right. you are. You couldn't just send them, send her a text and be like, you know what? We had a great time, but I don't think you're the right fit for us. Mm -hmm. And we wish you the best. Yeah. They can't even do that. No, they just dump her. Because they're assholes. Right. They're snotty, Just like they got snooty. dumped by Keisha. They yeah. didn't like it, though, right? <laughs> yeah. But they're okay to do it to somebody like Alexis. So exactly. So they're talking about that. They're talking about how it didn't work out with Keisha. Mm hmm and then we have Nyla kind of talking about the women who try to enter into these marriages to yeah. become second, third wives and how, you know, they're women who are either wanting to get something for themselves and they don't really want to contribute and or they want to come in and displace the first wife. Yeah. And then there's the people who just don't want to do any of it because they think y'all are crazy. Yeah. And I that thought was that was interesting, interesting in, terms of, in terms of that mindset. What did you think? Totally. I thought it was interesting too. And the way that Nyla's talking about it though, like she's got this place of authority, like she knows what she's doing. I'm like, girl, shut up. Like you guys don't even have another person in the mix yet. Mm -hmm. You've been on a couple dates and they haven't worked out. And I think mm -hmm. part of that is because of you. And then... At some point, they start talking about, like, jealousy between the wives and stuff. And I think Shamir asks Nyla, like, have you ever been jealous? And Nyla, like, her dumbass, yeah. is like, no, I've never been jealous. You know, because I know my feelings aren't backed. And so I know I don't have to act on them. So even if I feel jealousy, I'm not going to acknowledge it. And I'm very mature. I've been alive on this planet for Whatever. this long. So I know how to conduct myself. And then Shamir's like, you've never been in the situation so yeah. you have no idea whether you're going to be jealous or not. And of course, we saw a preview at the beginning of this season mm -hmm. where Nyla gets very jealous, storms away from the couch, and I think gets upset during a date. I know. So she does not know of what she speaks, but she presumes to speak like an authority anyway. And that's why I'm now starting not to like her. I don't like them either. I don't like him. Yeah. Marble Mouth. I know. Marble Mouth is what they call him on Reddit, and that's Marble accurate. Mouth. Marble Mouth. I noticed this episode Did you? the no teeth yeah. the lack of teeth there he kind of reminds me of that guy on love after lockup what was his name that was with the new jersey girl oh god L L lenny Le <laughs> lenny. what was his name i don't know I it was l something i forget something. but he got the dentures yes. and then she said they were ugly yes. god what was his name but i do remember that yeah that's what he reminded me of but at least that guy on love after lockup was likable yeah and trying the very best that he could yeah speaking of the shibooties yeah i I did see somewhere on Reddit, let me take a moment to right. pull it up, a variety of people were calling them out. Somebody started with the fact that Naeem and Nyla are known 
like I don't want to say squatters this is all <laughs> alleged and I just read it on reddit so please don't come for me but like squatters like they'll get into a rental and then they'll stop paying until they're kicked out and they'll go into another rental <gasps> so these are just some of the comments somebody says oh my god I didn't know they couldn't afford their rent do either of them work Somebody else said, I have no idea. They have been taken to court umpteen times in 2023 alone for non-payment of rent. Somebody else said, mystery solved. They want a sister wife for the extra income that she could bring in. Oh my God, like the Davis family. Right. And then somebody else said, looks like she is a fifth grade teacher and he works in security. Both are on LinkedIn. She also wrote a book called Maddened, Musings of a Bipolar Mind. It looks like they just live rent free until they lose in court, then move on to the next sucker landlord and do the same thing. <gasps> so when she's sitting at the picnic table talking about women who want to come into the family, but they don't want to contribute, that's tipping her hand because she's looking to bring women in so that she can avail themselves of their income <gasps> to supplement her life so that they don't have to continue to be evicted across Pennsylvania where they live. Wow. If it's true, I don't even know. That's crazy. This is just the tea on the internet, but I, I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel like it's somewhat accurate. I mean, they do give me clout goblin vibes also. Like maybe that's why they're on the show and getting that TLC paycheck mm -hmm. so they can, you know, pay back their backed up credit cards right. or whatever else they're not paying. <laughs> right. That's wild yeah. if that's true. Yes. My gosh, I love to sip some tea. Yes, me too. So was there anything else with them no, that during that conversation? Yeah, it. so they're just talking about polygamy, the structure of polygamy, and then jealousy. And she was being a complete and total hypocrite. 100%. And I was snoring. Boring. And then we have, uh, last but not least, the Davis family, who are also kind of boring this episode. They're always boring. They give nothing. No, they don't. But we did have a new character come into the play mm -hmm. april's brother billy yes. who is totally based i yes. liked him i did too and i thought it was going to be a nothing burger me too yeah but ends up that billy is based yeah and i liked what he said but they also went to the lowry beer garden oh yeah yeah and i used to live right there there's like a oh whole row of townhomes and i lived there for like a year and i used to go to that beer garden honey and all drunk. these men would be buying me drinks oh and stuff. my god oh yeah i had a party or two at the wow. lowry beer garden you were getting your box eight out no there? i didn't say that <laughs> slow your roll calm down you were dating i was dating oh my god yeah, that was one of the places that i would go because it was like right across from where i lived that's so fun i know so i recognized it instantly that's cool so april and her look-alike brother billy <laughs> they, oh my i mean kind of the their jeans hair dude. hair color is different but the jeans are strong uh-huh yeah so they sit down to have a conversation and april starts giving him the update on danielle mm -hmm. because danielle as we all know left the day davis family for one day and then came back to the davis family mm -hmm. and billy had some thoughts about that yeah she immediately starts into that she's like yeah daniel moved back and he was like okay and april's like yeah so now we're gonna think about adding another sister wife into the mix and he's like why <laughs> literally uh, why he's like i don't think that's wise i think that's a dumb idea and then i think he just gets right into it and he's like yeah i think nick's using you yes i'm like thank you and then april's like well i don't think so i mean he's a stay-at-home dad and <laughs> we're not about the the gender norms over here and Kay. so we work and he stays home and takes care of your and he's Billy's like, well, what was he doing before that? Though? Exactly. Because <laughs> I think April's been with him for like 15 years. Yes. So like, what was he doing before that then? Exactly. It was giving me um, Christine Brown from S Sister Wives being like, what does the nanny do? Right. Like, what does Nick <laughs> do? And that's what everybody's asking on the internet. That's what we're asking. I don't think he does shit. He has deep thoughts, Beatrice. I, yes, he reads a lot. He philosophizes. Yeah. He ponders things. <laughs> Like Cat Williams, I'm reading 8,000 books a day or something. <laughs> By like. the time I'm eight years old. Yeah. Yes. He's not doing that shit. I wonder, like, if he's not taking care of their backyard, yep. is he cleaning the house? Is he making these women, like, do the dishes when I they get I guarantee you he's making them cook oh at night and he's making them clean the house as well. And or making them subsidize 
a nanny and or mate to come in and clean the house for him. That's crazy. He's living the life of royalty. And again, oh. I say it's a good gig if you can get it. I guess. And if these women are willing to do it, why would he stop? Well, and I'm like, I think they're the only family out of all the seasons of Seeking Sister Wife that are probably happy. Like, I think the women think that they're happy with this and they're fine with it. They all sleep in the same bed. They all get their time in the boom, boom room. I think they're fine with it. And so if it works for them, that's cool, <laughs> I guess. But I think Nick's a loser. And I think mm. Billy is totally telling the truth here, like in his talking head where he's like, I think that Nick just plays the part really well. I think he's mm-hmm. just living the best life that he can, mm-hmm. taking advantage of my sister and all of these other women. Right. And he has a point. But I mean, at some point, you have to let people make their own choices right. and live their own life. And April really loves this life for herself. And so, Billy, you're just going to have to, you know, maybe not support it outright, but yeah. just be there for her if and when she's going to need you. But, like, right. you don't have to lecture her all the time. She's a grown-ass woman, almost 40 years old. Yeah. She knows what she's doing, and this is the choice that she made. But I did respect that he said it on camera and that Nick is going to have to watch that back. And also uh, that everybody else is thinking it's the same damn thing. Hello. And even Billy's like, you know, everybody's going to think this. Like of he course. literally says that to I'm April. I'm like, thank you, Billy. I'm like, yes, he's speaking for all of us. So that was kind of interesting. That was it. Like that was basically Oh my it. God. Before we get off the Davises, I did see on Reddit that somebody posted April and is her name Jen? Yeah. April and Jen's most recent dating profile, it's just them. Oh, yeah. And they are, I want to say marketing, but they're presenting themselves as like a bisexual couple and or they're looking for bisexual slash gay women. Ooh. Yeah. So they're all poly then. Yeah. That would make sense. That's the big bed. That's why we have it. That's why we're all sleeping together in the big bed. Bed. That would make sense to me. Which I just think validates our theories. Oh, yeah. They have orgies all the time. And then they have their individual time in the boom, boom room. Yikes. Gross. <laughs> wow. What do you mean gross? I mean... You like, eat box all the time. Yeah. That's but, your favorite meal. Yeah. That's your delicacy, honey, is the box. You I love guess, the box. But I'm just like, with these ladies... Uh, you know, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be like, Jesus, love thy neighbor. Oh my God! Why you just these women? The yeah. idea of these women. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it right there. I can't. But I mean, you know what I mean? But that's, that's okay. We're all thinking. Your it. preferences are your prerogative, honey. I'm yeah. not thinking it. I think, hey, get it on if that's it, what you want. Totally. But if like, also, them, why can't we talk about it? No, for real. How just much it. more interesting would it be? women of the davis family if you could just talk about how y'all are eating each other's boxes in like semi-lesbian relationships and nick gets to tag in every once in a while i would like to know that i would love to know i would be enraptured to know that maybe they don't want their families to know that they're deviants (laughs) so let me just go up on tlc and also have a public dating profile looking for bisexual and lesbian women that's going to work yeah, totally. They don't know the well, nature of a raccoon no, they or don't. a redditor. <laughs> no, they that don't. shit's going to be found out. 100%. And then that's basically the end of the episode. And then we have the previews. Yeah. We have Natalia's friends coming over to that weird Airbnb. And then Danielle starts getting emotional again God. and is like, Pipe down, Danielle. Why don't you open up to me? <gasps> Why don't you tell me all your deep, dark secrets? Like, I'm like, You're so because weird. Because you're a really strange woman. I think she With a have- very odd motivation. She wants to fuck. Ugh. I think she wants to fuck. Open up to me. And I do mean your legs. Yeah, open up your legs. Yuck. Me. Ew. And then we have the Davis women, April, Jennifer, and Danielle meeting with that brunette chick. Interviewing the new hire. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And they're talking about how Nick stays at home and the women work. And this is, you know, uh, the opposite of societal roles. And this brunette chick's like, yeah, I love an alpha male. I mm-hmm. think that's how it should be. Yeah, right. The women should work. Give me a break, lady. And Danielle clocks it. She's like, I don't know if she's just saying that because she, she knows it's the right she thing. She wants to be on TV. Yeah. I thought that was kind of into the alpha male thing. I'm like, I wonder if the Davis family actually believes that. I wonder, too, because he doesn't actually strike me as an alpha male. No. He doesn't really have the spirit of a toxic alpha no but maybe maybe he does in the boom boom room I guess. never know ew and then we have nyla fighting yes. with neem's mother jamila yes over their daughter over over her daughter because i guess jamila is calling her out and being like um you're doing all this shit in front of your daughter and nyla's like don't talk about my kid 
And then they fight. I actually talked to my kid, implying that Jamila doesn't talk to her kids and or doesn't talk to Naeem. And Naeem, for all of his, like, anger, Mm -hmm. you know, and, like, all of his, like, broody, grumpy nature, he's just sitting there letting his mom pop off and his wife go crazy. And he's not saying a damn thing. I mean, I'm sure he will at some point. Maybe. But, like, Jamila's like, let's do it right now then, Nyla. What you gonna do? And I was like, well, what do you think's gonna happen if you try it? I'm like, so are we talking about... Fighting your mother-in-law You're with gonna your fist? Fight her? I want to fight you. Okay. I'm, gonna, I- I'm down. I'm going to take you outside. I'm at least twice your body weight. You don't have <laughs> yeah, a damn chance. At least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bitch. I'm just kidding. I said bitch. bitch. How dare you? I did think of you during that um, scene, though, the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law fight, and I'm like, dude, oh that'd would- be... <laughs> <laughs> we would never. It would actually be hilarious, though. I feel like your husband uh-huh. and my wife, your daughter, would be laughing at us. Fighting. You think so? If we fought? Yeah. I if can't we even fighting, imagine us fighting. We wouldn't be fi- We'd be play fighting. We'd be fighting over the bag of Cheetos or something. We right? are so... I, those Cheetos are mine, baby. <laughs> those Cheetos are mine. You can have the vape, but give me the Cheetos. But, like, I just feel like we're so alike. Yeah. And we're really very on a similar wavelength. Y'all don't even know. Yeah. We, Y'all don't even realize. Which you don't is even know. very alike. I yeah. can't imagine. And plus, I'm so super respectful and enlightened. I yeah. wouldn't fight with you, honey. No. I would walk away. But if you fucking tried it, <laughs> do not forget I have ninja stars and I've got nunchucks and I don't know how to use them. Catch me outside. Okay, bitch. <laughs> All right. Are there any final thoughts about this episode? I'm loving this season. Okay. I'm loving this show. I think it's great. This episode was good. There's a lot of weird dynamics. I did not miss the Ryans. Oh my god, I forgot about. I did the not Ryans. miss them. Is there anybody else that wasn't on? No, that was. We it. don't need the the Ryans. We're nope. voting them off the polygamous <laughs> deviant island. Yeah, get out of here. They bring nothing. Nothing except skeevy vibes and creepy creepy old man vibes i agree yeah all right well is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we bounce beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go on to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review <laughs> please and thank you it really helps us grow the pod and become famous <laughs> that's all you want <laughs> then you're gonna get it i want the fame. and the spirit of fame is gonna come inside your body with your ejaculate brain and you're gonna see it doesn't it's not good to be famous i'll be changed it's better that forever. we wear it's better that we wear the wigs honey that's true and people don't know who we be are humble raccoons that's humble dumpster. right please don't forget that we will be back later this week to talk the valley which is crazy yeah I love the valley. The valley it's is so nuts. good. It's so VPR like wah, wah. Van, VPR is boring, but if y'all don't listen to that stuff, you really should listen to the v- yeah. the valley because that's funny and yes, that's crazy. Yes, we should also watch it because it's actually really good yeah. trashy reality television. Yeah. We will be back later this week to recap both of those shows. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>